Hey, it's Forensic Mike. Uh, today we're going to be walking through how to get Frida up and running on an emulated Android environment. Um, the video assumes a couple of things, uh, that you have an Android emulator with root capabilities up and running. And uh, so something like this. Now you don't necessarily have to have the exact same version uh, or environment that I do. Um, this is Android Device Emulator, which comes with Android Studio. Um, but you can use VirtualBox or Jenny Motion or any other Android emulator that supports root uh, capabilities, and uh, and this will work no problem. Um, the second thing is that you will have ADB installed and accessible from path. So if you type you know ADB, you'll see that things are good here. And another step that would be good to check is you know ADB devices to make sure that your emulator is showing up on there. Um, the next thing is Python 3 plus, including pip, both accessible from path. So um, you can verify that with Python dash dash version and make sure that when you type pip, you have stuff happening. So um, if all of those three things are in place, then we are in business. And um, so if you happen to be on the Frida website, you'll see that it's pretty straightforward to get all of the Frida things installed. So uh, I'm just going to follow what they say there, which is to pip install Frida tools. Perfect. So I've already got um, my Frida tools installed. And now if I was to do uh, Frida LS devices, which is one of the commands that just got installed, you can see my emulator is showing up on there. However, if I try and do basically anything else, um, i.e. Frida-PS, which is a tool that lets me see what running processes um, are on the target, um, I have to use the dash capital U. Uh, and this is going to be on basically everything uh, every every Frida command from here forward um, in terms of targeting the emulator. I need that dash capital U. Um, if I try this, you'll see that I have a problem. I cannot connect to the Frida server. So you have to understand that Frida is a client server application. It's always about um, reaching out and it can do it over USB or network or it doesn't really matter. It can even do it to the same machine, right? I can be both uh, um, the host server and the original Frida. Um, but uh, I will uh, show you what, what's happening here and why, um, why this isn't working. So the Frida server uh, binary is actually available on GitHub under the releases page for Frida. And so you need to scroll down through here and find Frida server. Uh, and you're looking for the uh, Android x86.exe. So you can go ahead and download that. I've already done that and I've extracted it. Um, and then we need to push this to the device. So we do that with um, ADB push. And then we put the name of the file that we want to push. And then we tell it um, to whatever folder it is we want to push to. Cool. So that's done. Um, and I know, I think I did it earlier, but just to confirm that we are root, we'll do this, adb root. And now let's go into an adb shell. And I have to bear with me because I already have a bunch of these, so I'm just going to get rid of them. Um, other than the, yeah, so this is the only thing I want in here at the moment. Um, and you'll note that if we try and execute it, it fails because it can't execute because we haven't given it permissions to execute yet. So before we do that, I'm going to suggest we rename it to something a little easier to work with. And then we give it the ability to execute. Um, and then in theory, you could just run it like this. And now um, if we spin up another command window, if we do our free to ps u, you'll see that it's working now, great. So here's a list of running processes on our Android device. Um, but the problem is if you close this window, then you're done. So something I've discovered that you can do here um, is use nohup and then an ampersand like that. And now Frida server is up and running uh, and will work uh, even if I close my command prompt. All right, so we now have our Frida server up and running, which we've confirmed by testing our Frida PS command. And now we want to attach to a running process. 
Um, so first things first, we're going to start up an app to attach to on the phone. I'm just going to pick the calculator because it's easy. And uh, when you attach to an app, you need to specify a few command line arguments to Frida. The first one you've seen before, dash capital U to say to the USB um, attached device. And then the second one that I typically use is runtime equals V8. And notice it's a dash dash here. Um, and this uh, argument tells Frida to use the V8 JavaScript runtime instead of the uh, duct tape one. And it's got some nice quality of life stuff in there, especially when we're working on Android. So I recommend using it. Um, and I'm just in the habit of using it pretty much every time. Uh, finally, we need to specify which app or process, I should say, that we want to attach to. Now, most commonly, this is probably going to be the one that you have in the foreground. And I just discovered this particular way of doing this recently, and I wish I had learned it a lot sooner. Uh, dash capital F targets the frontmost application. So you can pretty much be done with your, your command line statement here. Um, so if I attach, you'll see that I'm into the Rita REPL, and I can do whatever it is that I'm trying to do. Um, so that's the sort of easiest way of doing it. Um, but there are some other ways of doing it too. And you're going to need either the um, process ID or the app identifier to use uh, the other ways, uh, or the app name technically. Um, so what I would recommend in that case is if you don't know it already, use free to PS. And if your app is already running, then uh, if you add the dash A, it's going to break it down to a lot more of a condensed list of apps. You can see the, the calculator is listed on here. So that's the identifier <clears throat> that I can reference the calculator by. And that is the process ID, which of course is going to change every time the app spins up. So if I want to use the identifier, I now have a couple of options. I can tell Frida to respawn the app um, and actually pause execution so that if I need to get some hooks in before any code has run at all, I can do that. So you can see on the emulator, the app has apparently closed and we're not really sure what's happening. That's because execution has paused. So now I'm going to uh, type percent resume and the app continues to execute, and now we have our functional calculator. So dash lowercase f and then an app identifier um, will relaunch the app and pause execution. If you'd like to relaunch the app and not pause execution, then you can apply the dash dash no pause um, argument, and then you'll have the same behavior with no pause. Uh, I will note that I, I'm not sure if this is an iOS specific thing, but uh, I've found that if you wait about 10 seconds without resuming, that the app, at least on iOS, will crash. So um, just be aware of that. Uh, the other thing you can do is if the app is already running, such as the calculator is right now, then you can refer to it with the dash N, and it will attach to a running process. So you can see I've attached to the calculator. Now, where this might be useful is if you had another app open, um, I'll just open the Messages app. I'm still able to attach to the Calculator app, even though it's not in the foreground. So there may be a use case there. Um, but again, typically, um, I find that the easiest way forward with this is to use dash capital F for frontmost. And then we will just hit whatever app is currently in the foreground. Now you are within your right to start coding from here and trying to uh, apply all the hooks that you want to do. But for myself, uh, most of the time, uh, I usually like to start with a base script that provides some sort of base functionality that expedites uh, applying things like method hooks. And so the script that I tend to use is called uh, Raptor. So if you just Google Raptor Android Frida, you'll find the repo. And the one that I typically start with is the underscore trace for whichever operating system I'm working on. If you look at the Android trace, you'll see that there are some trace functions in here. And at the bottom of this, there are a couple of examples of how to use uh, the functions that are provided. So I've already got mine downloaded here. 
So you can see it's the same script. Um, I've just found that the Raptor scripts are, are pretty effective and they save you <clears throat> from having to write a lot of code. So they'll give you a way of, you know, using wildcards to specify class names or, it'll, you know, potentially override many, many different implementations uh, for the same method name uh, in a very short time. So in order to inject a script into a running app, uh, we can keep exactly the same parameters that we had, and we just use the dash L lowercase parameter, and then we type the name of the script that we want to inject. And then as soon as Frida attaches, this script will be executed. And all of the function names that you see here, for example, trace module, if I start typing trace, you'll see that they are all available now. Um, one thing to note is that if you uh, add some new function, and then you, let's just throw in a console.log, and then you save your um, JS file that's been injected. Um, it's not apparent in this case, but it's actually hot reloaded the script. So you can see that if I type sum, now I've got some new function that does whatever I say it, that it will do. Um, one gotcha with this though, is that if you have any uh, method hooks in place, the hot reload will wipe them out. So just be aware of that. If you save your JS file, you can potentially lose a lot of work. So uh, other than that, the only other tips that I wanted to give in this video uh, pertain to what to do with the output of Frida. Um, for whatever reason, the command prompt is kind of annoying to work with, um, especially when you're trying to capture all of the text. So sometimes control A works. I just tried it and it didn't work. Um, but for the purposes of like capturing all of the text in the window, the best way that I've found to make this work each and every time is to right click the title bar, go to edit, and then select all, and then control C or right click. And then I usually just open up a new uh, notepad plus plus document and just paste. And then periodically I will exit out of Frida completely and clear screen so that I don't have to recopy everything that I've just copied. Um, and this, the use of this will become evident when we get into tracing. Uh, and tracing can leave you with thousands and thousands of lines of code to sift through. So, so such that I'll actually usually end up with like 30 or 40 tabs of spam, <laughs> for lack of a better way of describing it, that I then will sift through later on. And it's not, it, it's valuable because, you know, it, you might want to measure how something changes over the course of a bunch of activity that you're doing in the app. So I, I definitely recommend keeping it, but just don't let it get so crazy that, you know, it's one giant file that you're trying to work with because Notepad++ eventually starts sucking. Um, it's much better to have, you know, one file per trial run or whatever. So um, that's basically it. And uh, I'll be releasing some more videos talking about how to um, do some cooler things than this, but this was just intended to cover the setup phase, and hopefully this has helped you achieve just that. Thanks very much, and if you like the video, let me know. Thanks.